John from Heavy Set Tactical. Today we're going to be taking a look at a knife from Survive Knives that I've grown to really, really like. And this is the GSO 4.5 Bushcraft. And this knife has black canvas micarta, so it looks really, it's a really good variant, really great color, a lot of grip. This is the 4.5 Bushcraft in K890 steel, which is really, really nasty stuff. Uh, very, very hard, holds a really good edge, and is a, a really strong steel. Reminds me of like 3V, but a little bit better edge retention. Uh, that's in my experience, anyway. So, K890, a lot of people have questions about. And this steel is going to be a little less uh, corrosive than carbon steels. Um, so, you're going to get a lot of the properties of a good stainless, uh, as far as like the, the really, really well-held edge. Um, and it's very tough, but you're not going to have, uh, you know, full rust resistance. Well, I mean, nothing's truly full rust resistant, stainless, but uh, the K890, guys, is a really, really good option. And uh, it'll patina a little bit. Uh, the K-Steels, for me anyway, um, seem, to, seem to get a little bit darker with time, but this thing is not going to pit out and rust like a 1095 or something. Um, you know, more of a carbon, a full carbon, not full carbon, but you know what I mean, more of a carbon steel. Um, it's kind of in the middle, like like 3V. 3V I wouldn't consider a carbon steel. I wouldn't consider uh, a stainless, but um, it's kind of right in the middle. That reminds me a lot of the K890's properties. Um, but yeah, had a lot of, lot of great um, experience with the K-steels that Spiderco offers, and I'm really happy that Survive is diving into that pool. Uh, the K890 for me has done really well. So let's do a little bit of testing with this today, and uh, a little bit of carving, and we'll see how it fares. Okay guys, so I'm kind of trying to use this log as a platform to show you one thing, and that's a little bit more of this beautifully precise tool. So guys, when you look at this, you know, I think what guy was going for by using the K-Steel <laughs> by using the K-Steel is to be able to have essentially a bush craft lightsaber uh, in your pocket that still can hold up and is still going to keep that tip and you can see how stout that tip is. So one thing I really would like to do today is just show you guys a little bit of that. I mean just how precise this thing is is just very 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 sharp very 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 handy you can still pull back on it and get a little bit of choppage in there which is nice guys this thing is a lightsaber so if you're going to be using this for any kind of delicate work you know it's going to do that anything a little harder uh, it's going to do that too. But yeah, if you're, in, you know, into the carving, the traps and triggers, the tent pegs, the just the occasional occasional sit on the porch and whittle, uh, you know, kind of activity. Look at that. It's just crazy. This thing is just, you know, a lot of Scandies will do that, you know, be, uh, perform very slicey very well. But this thing is to another degree of kind of an elegant, elegant bush knife. So you guys know I like to talk while I work, very informal. Um, try not to cut away the video too much and, you know, it, it's just that this knife is going to continue doing what you need it to do for a long, long time. And the some of the delicate stuff is really what I'm more interested in showing today. Just how slicey this thing is, is just... So, you know, if you guys have any kind of really delicate woods tasks as far as the carving stuff that you want to do with this, 
it'll do that. If you're into some hardcore batoning, it's going to do that too. Now, they say don't baton with a Scandi. Well, to be honest with you guys, I think it's safe to say that this is one of those Scandies you can do a decent amount of uh, acceptable batoning with. No cutaway scenes. No crap where I keep saying, oh, I'll be right back. Let me go. Let me go strop this and then I'll come back and show you. Look at that. You can follow the sunlight on the bottom there. Not one roll, not one chip. Let's do a little bit more hard banging around, shall we? <laughs> Now, guys, I'm doing a little bit of abusive stuff because I'm trying to explain to you how rank this case deal is. Straight down onto that belly as hard as I can. Now we're going to cut out some notches, really bend and pry on that edge. It's too sharp. <laughs> Man, such an elegant tool. So guys, one of the things I really want to show you today is just how sick nasty this steel is for making Scandies out of. Because... Yeah, I, I want to show you that some of you guys that don't do the Scandi or Zero Grind thing, holy crap, you just get locked in so nicely. Some of you guys that are afraid to do the Scandies because you don't want to damage your edge up and then not be able to fix it correctly, have no fear. Because I don't think you're going to have to worry about any significant edge damage with these knives. Let's find something to baton. Hey guys, we are going to do some freaking nasty baton. So you guys know me. Usually I'm pretty prepared, right? Wrong. Today I'm not prepared. So I got a baton here that I had to break off of a tree. And we got this freaking monster tank knife. So, since I don't have my, my, uh, whatchamacallit, my normal, uh, baton and my saw, my Baco saw to cut some lengths out to baton with, we're going to baton through this hard old dead sapling Not so dead, I guess. Now, guys, anybody that does Scandies is going to tell you this knife, hardwood, you can see that real fibrous, dense inside there. And it's still wet and hard. I mean, it still uh, has moisture in it. Anybody's going to tell you, dude, you should probably not baton with this fine of an edge or be ripping out like that but guys i'm here to show you just how freaking ballsy this survive knife scandy is so we are going to do two things at once that you ain't supposed to do with a delicate scandy look at those chunks look at those nice clean cuts this thing's taken out and guys i'm using the moisture of the tree to clean that edge off I don't know about you, but I don't see one darn nick. In fact, I just almost cut myself. This thing is too sharp. So, we're going. One shot. Oh man, that, that knife in there, boy, was just bent. 
just a little bit. I, you can see the give on camera, I hope. It gives and then snaps right back. And that's exactly what you want a quality heat treated steel on a blade like this. Guys, this is not a thick blade. At the end, I'll go through specs. I'll show you, uh, tell you exactly to the number how uh, you know thin this profile, overall profile of this blade is. So guys, the fact that it is so thin, every single person who makes knives is gonna agree that I should not be doing this with this freaking knife. This is a very abusive type of testing that I don't even think I'd, not that I wouldn't do it with a work tough gear, a hard carbon steeled knife from work tough gear. I have done it with them, but guys, this is one third the width, width with a 10 time probably potentially even 15 time thinner edge. This is the last knife I should be doing this testing with. Ah. But I told Guy, I wanted to show everybody just how freaking abusable this Scandi edge is. Ah. Guys, this is a no nonsense knife. You can have it as now. Do I suggest doing this kind of stuff all the time? Heck no. Because you probably will have some chipping, potential chipping, eventually. I mean, guys, this is some dumbass testing, hard use testing. I'm just trying to be a dick to this knife to show you guys how legit, holy crap. How legit this K steel is. Now guys, I ain't cutting away. I could have cut cut this stupid part of the video out, but I'm not gonna cut away. I'm gonna keep abusing the crap out of this thing on camera, because I don't want you guys to think I'm changing anything up. I just have to change where I'm standing because I'm on a hill a little bit. And then I'm gonna show you all the wood chips all around the place I'm standing. Look at that boy. Oh, the vine just fell on the damn camera. Trust me, I, I said it would be sick to Joe X this thing and show you guys just how freaking raw this steel is, but I'm not one for wasting elegant blades. And I know a lot of you guys aren't buying this knife to, I know a lot of you guys aren't buying this knife to break it. So I'm not taking it that far. All right. But guys, look at the, look at the slicing. Shit. Look at the slicing profile. Sorry, I was looking at the camera like an idiot. Now I got a little platform to do some batoning on. There's too much give in it to hit it sideways. Guys, I'm banging on the scales right here. I'm doing a lot of things that I probably wouldn't do if it weren't for the fact of me trying to drive this point home that these, these designs in this K-Steel are freaking unbelievable. Not a bend, not a chip, not a bend, not a chip. Look at that, dead straight. Guys, anyone that makes Scandies is gonna watch this video and cringe. This is curved, one, two, three curve, nasty, nasty wood. So I'm, as I'm hitting the blade down in, it's cocking to the right like that, like a C. Uh, uh, uh. 
Sorry. Had things in there. All right, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm talking about, all right? Use some of that moisture again. Clean that blade off. A lot of people I know, including myself, we're not into the scandy thing. A lot of times we're not. Dude, this blade is super warm from all the stress. Guys, I'm telling you. Oh, there we go. I'm telling you, there ain't one single stop. Not one single roll. Not one microchip, micro roll. Not one glint catching the light. And guys, when we do the tabletop after all this, you'll see I haven't stropped this thing or done anything. <sighs> this is abusive testing at its finest. That's crazy. I, I keep looking down this thing expecting to say, oh shit, this is why you don't do this with this thin of a profile. But guys, this case steel, just making sure I'm on target with the camera. Guys, that's why I'm not cutting away. I don't want any BS in the comments of, oh, you didn't test it as hard as you should have. Look at that son of a bitch right there. Clean cuts. I'm just over and over. Just and then guys, I'm going into the grain. I'm not just going down to where the the thickest part of the blade is split the wood and the edge isn't touching. We're going in here. I can't wait to show you a 360 of what the hell I did to this tree. Ugh. Nothing. Not one chip. I can see it. Not one. Get out of here, man. Guys, I did this to show you how little it would chip. And it hasn't chipped or rolled one time with a zero edge, a zero degree bevel on there. How is this possible? I swear to God, if I keep this up, I'm going to have sore wrists tomorrow. All right, guys, this is where the rubber meets the road as far as I'm concerned. Taking you out of the jig. Okay. So this is... Look at that. You guys can see the edge. Give this some time when the video uploads. Okay, you see right... You see right at this tip of the wood here? See where that glint is running down the knife right there? Guys, there ain't one hang up. Look at that. You can see from the light. I turned the light on on my camera. Would you look at that? Not one dinger, not one zinger, not one roll, not one chip, dead straight blade. Anyone that deals with Scandies or makes Scandies is going to tell you that even based off of just what I did right here, this is incredible. Guys, I have Scandies from so many companies, and as soon as I baton anything, it, it starts to get a couple little stops. So where I'd run my fingernail across that edge like this, just a couple stops. No, no chips, but just a couple rolls or stops. This one doesn't have a single thing. Right. And now 
I'll show you this. Look at that. Looks like a beaver was gnawing on it. Guys, these knives from Survive in the case deal are not playing around. Not at all. Let's do some tip testing. <laughs> so guys, one of the only things yet that I could do with this knife to make it even more hairy of a video and for you guys to see just how no nonsense this K890 steel is is do a sorry is do a nasty nasty uh, bit of tip tip testing Now guys, because it's a Scandi, I don't want to take that uh, tip testing to an even further, further, uh, ne uh, you know, when I stab it straight in and go back and forth 20 degrees, if this tip is going to break, that, it's, that's going to chip it off. As you guys can see, a guy that I, that does get really technical with his testing cutting board reviews or uh, cutting board knife reviews I will tag him in the description so you can see some of his tip testing explanations and I agree with him if I stab this knife in just like that and go about 18 to 20 degrees either way that is a that should be more than enough to crack the tip off of one of these knives but people tell I guess some guys were telling him oh you know you don't even test your tips you're just giving them a wiggle well that is a significant amount of abuse and he has broke many knives doing that many tips doing that all right so now get the hell out of here i was hope, hoping maybe we could see just a little something messed up there just to know that this knife has limits so guys half of what i'm doing here is showing you the capability uh, uh, of this knife and the other half is to show you its limitations so you don't have to do it or you know what the limitations are uh, of that steel holy shit Guys, I did not expect today to go like this. Look at that there, boy. Nothing. Ready? Nothing. And guys, that is so still so hair, hair shaven sharp. You can see this ain't dead. This is alive there's those fibers are really you know this outside stuff's a little soft here but you guys can see i'm stabbing it into something that's still alive the fibers are still very 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 tough in this tree You don't got one. Sorry, I keep forgetting where the darn camera's at. You don't got one thing with this knife to even begin to question, guys. I, I I've been saying for a while, even before Survive started using K steels. This was long before. Everybody tells me I ride Survive and this and that. Long before Survive started using K steels, I've been going on and on about uh, Spyderco's uh, K390 and uh, guys these case deals are here to stay what I'm trying to say here is that this knife should never be used for 
not even 50% of the damage that I put it through, potential damaging acts that I put it through today. And you should always use a Scandi for its intended purpose as far as, oh, man, that stuff's hard. You should always use a Scandi for its, in its intended purpose, which, which is a carving, feather sticking, and more of a finesse knife. Not a, you know, I'm treating this the same way, if not harsher to prove a point, than I would treat an SE6. You know, we're going lateral. We're putting in that edge and peeling out when I was doing that batoning. Guys, this... Pardon my spit noise. You guys know me. I'm, I'm a little old school here. As far as these case deals, man, this knife is here to stay. And this steel is here to stay. So I'm telling you guys, I know there's been some issues with back orders from Survive Knives, but everybody's working on it extremely hard. They're in a great groove right now. A lot of knives going out the door. I was up, I spent a significant amount of time up there. So guys, make sure if you want one of these, reach out. Uh, don't be afraid to get one. I know they have a lot of these that are, I have a pre-order in for one of these and, uh, Guys, they're the, the, the K8 the K890. I would choose this because of its overall toughness. It's not as brittle as Magna Cut. Okay, Magna Cut isn't gonna patina, but this isn't gonna just rust. K890 is not just gonna poof incinerate after getting some salt water on it, okay? Like this stuff is very, very, very uh corrosion resistant. It just patinas a little bit. It's not gonna pock and and uh and come apart like like a 1095 knife would or get really bad uh like you know like an 80 crv2 steel wood but man guys i'll tell you what i am amazed with this k steel so i'm gonna pop it out again That's not a little mark. So, look at that, guys. You can still see the freaking glint on the micro polished. Uh, oops, sorry. The micro, what they do with this zero grind is they take, uh, uh, they put, obviously, a lot of people put a micro convexed, just buffed edge on it, just to give it some extra strength. Look at that beautiful thing. Tell me you see one bend in that knife. Sorry guys, I'm just so enamored by this thing sometimes. Let's move on. What's up guys, John from Heavy Set Tactical and we are going to, please excuse the air pump noise that you hear in the background. We're going to talk about some SHIT here, some stiff, and it is about the facts. It is about the uh, the thing that's such a shame about steel choices. Um, that that's going to be a lot about what my video is about, guys. Sometimes it drives me crazy when I'm in a in a knife forum or I'm in a knife group on Facebook, and I have an, a fantastic knife or or a fantastic. Uh, model of a knife and I hear somebody literally say oh well it's not magna cut or oh well it's not 3v so guys I'm, we're gonna we're gonna burst some bubbles here today because I don't give a crap <laughs> I do this for fun and I'm more about facts than feelings so this this is out of a steel called k890 and this is after all my testing all I could not hardly get off is that crap there which is some sap i'll use some wd then but i want you guys to take a second and look at the edge here this is not polished or anything i took some solvent and got the sap and everything off the blade but that was it uh, i'm going to show you right now just how nasty this edge still is with a little piece of paper 
Guys, this edge is still, Jesus, as soon as I start shooting the video, it gets super windy. Just as sharp as it ever was. So guys, let me do another one here, a curve cut. Oh. Oops. God, I hate when my blade's a little damp and it makes it look like it's going to cut paper. Okay, so now that I did a shite job at that, that's a great cut. That's a great edge. So, guys, this is the GSO 4.5 Bushcraft in K890. K890 is a third generation micro clean steel by bowler so guys bowler's been in the game for a long time this is the at the time was the toughest grade of steel that bowler offers in their entire lineup of steel uh so guys this is not a steel to be trifled with this is not a joke uh steel or any kind of you know bs um we're using it because it's cheaper than 3V steel. No. It, at the time, it was the toughest. And now, K888 was... This is K890. K888 was formed to be literally slightly tougher. So, guys, this has a really good edge and really good toughness due to, like, a really equal microstructure inside the steel. And the carbide, the size of the carbides is very fine. So guys, this steel has been being perfected by Bowler for a long time. We're gonna talk about specs, and we're gonna talk about how this is 100%, especially after my testing and my usage in my mind and on the fact sheet. Guys, this is a better steel than 3V. And it all, all it does is taint in color a little bit and stain a little bit, like 3V does. I I'm sorry, but this is tougher steel and holds quite a better edge than 3v does and i'm going to at some point prove that with a 3v skin we're going to do that um sorry for the my knuckle i smashed it with a baton there just took the, this skin off of my knuckle so guys this is one of my favorite uh scandy knives probably my favorite you know uh i am not here to uh do a posi scheme with survive knives or any of the bullshit somebody's going to say in the comments so don't even start i will not take the time to even reply to stupid comments uh guys i've been up there i've seen the hundreds of knives a week that go right out the door to their customers and they're working on their back order so if you're watching this video just to hear about drama skip it i don't have time i don't give a shit i have real problems in my life and things to attend to so guys what we're going to talk about here is the overall specs real fast. Sorry for the uh, choice language. Um, you guys know me. I don't like to swear a lot in my video. So, this is excellent, excellent Kydex that was formed for this knife. Really, really positive retention. Absolutely no rattling. That's never coming out of there. So guys, let's talk about some specs. This knife overall from tip to tip is 9.5 inches. The blade length is four and a half inches aka the GSO 4.5 uh, so it is a 4.5 inch blade the blade weight uh, sorry blade height is 1.125 inches very very thin profile but as you saw in the video that thing's got balls the uh, thickness of uh, okay holy crap guys I, I get things backwards sometimes okay so the blade height <laughs> from here to here I thought I thought I'm sorry the blade thickness is 0 0.115 inches the thickness is 0 0.115 the height of the blade from blade to hilt 
is 1.125 inches. And then the weight of this with the canvas micarta handles is 6.8 ounces. So guys, it is a very, very, very light package. And you can really see, all I did was wipe this down. Guys, I, this is after the testing video. And all this knife has on it is some minor, minor, minor stuff on the back here. Just some minor crap stuck in there from batoning. There is not one. Tell me that doesn't look like it just came from the factory. It just came from Survive, from the workshop. All I did was wipe it off with some solvent. So, guys, this knife and this steel are just absolutely incredible. When we're talking about the overall ergonomics of the knife, very, very comfortable in a lockup position like this to get right up on that blade. Um, also in a, like a hammer grip, super comfortable. Um, guys, this, these knives are so excellent. And this is one of the steels that, that is very, e like very easy compared to some of the problems that can happen with uh, uh, other stainless steels like MagnaCut. Um, they haven't had any issues with the sheets of K890, so it's always going to come out, you know, in the words of Guy, always going to be a homogenous, uh, really great end result. This material is just excellent. The, the inside structure of this steel is very even, uh, so, you know, the heat treat is excellent. Everything on it is just excellent. Um, this was PT treated K890. Uh, so, guys, again, you know, we're looking at just one of the overall most badass scanny knives I've ever used. There's not one shred of stoppage on this knife when I run my finger over it. Very minor little scrapes on that kind of belt satin that's on there from sharpening it. Other than that, absolutely no problems. I would recommend this to any guy who does serious like bushcrafting tasks. Uh, I would recommend it for uh, any woodsman. I mean, God, you could use this knife for anything that you're going to do out in the, the woods. And it's super, super light and just really comfortable to carry. So, guys, thank you very much for watching my video. Don't be afraid to like and subscribe and, and get yourselves one of these at SurviveKnives.com because they are just kind of the whole package to me. Just an excellent, excellent knife. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and my little rant. Like always, stay safe and stay heavy.